Hi there, welcome to this video where I'm going to show you how you can set up webhooks to allow you to fire N8N automations from Bubble. So you can add in any automations that you have on N8N into your web app or your SaaS that's built upon Bubble. Let me show you what we're going to build today. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take an article on the web just from a URL and I'm going to get a summary back from that. And I've got my N8N uh, automation set up here where we are simply getting the URL, we are reading the HTML, sending that HTML to OpenAI, and then sending it back. Super, super simple. This is not about a, a fancy automation. This is how we're going to set up the webhooks. So just to show you how it's going to work, we uh, paste in the URL here of a news article, click Get Summary, and it's going to take a second or two, and we're not building a super fancy app where uh, you know we've got lots of animations and we've got a processing group and a little spinny thing, but there we go. We get back our summary, and this all has come from N8N. Now you could build this just within Bubble. However, I really like to use NAN for more complicated uh, tasks and processes that I don't want to have just within Bubble. So I'm gonna show you how you can set up webhooks within Bubble in order to fire NAN automations. Let's get into it. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna do is create a very simple page on Bubble. We're not gonna make it look nice. We're just gonna make it look okay or somewhat okay. So I'm gonna change the background color a little bit. Um, I am going to set the layout to column. I'm going to add in a group and we're going to put that group um, in the middle and we're going to make it a maximum of let's say 800 pixels wide. Let's give it a 50 pixels at the top and padding of 40 all the way around. And we're going to make the background of this white. Okay, so and then I'm going to round the corners as well. Okay, let's drop in a title. I'm going to call this uh, NAN workflow uh, webhook tutorial and let's make that a little bit bigger and bold okay the next thing we're going to do is have our input url and let's add a little bit of spacing to this and then we're going to get an input and drag our input in just below that and we're going to make it uh, full width and we're going to rename it um, input, oops, input URL. Then we need our button, so we'll drag a button, and we're going to call this one get summary. And we're going to add a little bit of spacing to this, just twenty above. Then we're going to add in a group, and in this group we are going to call it output group, and we're going to make it of type text. And then let's add a little bit of spacing to this as well. Let's just put twenty above it. And the last thing that we're going to do is put some text in that output group and make the text equal to the output group's text, so the parent group's text, because we're gonna uh, get the output and put it into this group, which is gonna power uh, this text here. Okay, so very, very basic. Um, let's have a look at how it looks. There we go, absolutely nothing fancy. I'm sure you can produce a much better bubble application than this, but that's gonna do for our tutorial today. Now let's go over and have a look at the N8N. But first of all, I'm gonna collect the uh, the article that I want to summarize, and it's this one. Apple says that it will showcase new iPhone, blah, 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 blah. Okay, I'm gonna copy the URL. And in N8N, this is my workflow that I have got. Very, very simple. All that it's doing is uh, we are, we've got a chat input, and it is going to take the URL that we input. It's gonna go and get the HTML of that page. It's gonna then send it to OpenAI, which I have told, uh, please summarize this article. I'm going to give you the entire HTML of the web page, and then it's going to output uh, whatever OpenAI comes back with. So let me show you um, how that works. So I'll reload the chat, and I'll paste in the URL, and it will take a second to go through um, the OpenAI stage because I think it's about 40,000 tokens. So it costs about two cents to run this every single time because it's a lot of HTML. If I was running this for real, I would definitely put in some code here to try and strip away some of that HTML, which is useless. But there we go, we can see that it has come back and it has said, uh, this article discusses blah, 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 blah. Basically, it's given us a nice summary of this article here. Okay, so how do we turn this into something we can trigger from Bubble? So first of all, we are going to um, add in a webhook. Now, if you're running this in production, then you do want to add authentication to it. However, since we're not, we're going to leave it as none, which is going to be fine. With the response, we're going to say use respond to webhook node. Um, and then what we can do is we're going to copy this URL. We're going to go over to Bubble 
and we're going to go to the plugins page. We're going to go to API connector. If you don't have it, then go to add plugins and go to API connector and install it. Um, I've already got a few plugins, uh, sorry, I've got a few API set up already, but I'm going to add another. I'm going to call this one NA10. We don't need any authentication or anything. So I'm just going to hop into this first one and call it uh, summarize article. And I'm going to leave it as a get. I'm going to change it to action. And I copied this URL and I'm going to paste it in here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a parameter. I'm going to call it URL and I'm going to get this URL from the article and put it in here and turn private off. Now, before I press initialize, I'm going to go over to NA10. I'm going to click listen for test events. And then I'm going to go to bubble and click initialize. And it's probably going to throw an error. Yep, there we go. Um, however, OK, yeah, that's fine. It says no response to webhook found in the workflow. However, you could see that it reacted, right? It, it wouldn't have thrown an error if nothing had been caught by the webhook. So that's fine. That's not fully working yet, but uh, we can see it's reacting and we, we're connecting to it. But actually, what we need to do is pull through that URL in order to get everything to work. So I'm going to change this to immediately. Um, I'm then going to listen again. And we're going to go back to bubble. And then this time, hopefully, we should get a response. There we go. Uh, very, very simple workflow was started. But what this means is that if we go in here, we now have our output and we have our URL, which is that URL which we passed into the parameters here. So what this means is we can go to NA10. We can get our webhooks over here and put that over here, there. I'm going to delete uh, that um, and close chat. And I'm going to connect the webhook to the edit fields. And on the edit fields, I'm going to go in here. And I've got a parameter set up called URL, which I'm passing through. And I'm going to uh, change this and grab the uh, URL. Yeah, this is the webhook. Grab the URL that's in the webhook. Just like that. Test step. There we go. There's our URL. OK, then we're going to add a webhook response. So we've got the webhook firing the sequence. Then we need to add a webhook at the end, which is going to uh, pass the response back to bubble. So we're going to add and we're going to go webhook, response webhook. That's what we want. And we're going to say we are just going to say text. If you're setting up more of a complicated flow, then you may want to pass back uh, all incoming items or specific JSON. But we're just going to pass back text. Um, and one thing that we're going to do if we want text is come back over to bubble and the data type we need to set to text as well. So we've got both of those set to text. Now, in order to pull data through, we need to run it. So um, if I go test workflow, uh, it's waiting for a trigger event. Let's go back over to bubble. Let's reinitialize. And we'll go back over here and see, OK, what's happening here? OK, OK, so we've got an error where we did not change back the response. We're going to response, respond to webhook. And we are going to test that again. And we're going to initialize again. And it's still not going to give us a proper response, which is fine. But we should, on any N8N, see this. So we should, should see OpenAI responding, responding, responding. And we haven't actually passed anything back. So we're not going to see anything uh, back, which is fine, because we haven't set it up yet. Um, I'm going to go respond to webhook. Now we've got all of the. Uh, steps here before. So if I have a look through, we can see all of the steps. We want this last one here where it is taking the summary. I'm going to drag that into the response body and that should be fine. So now I'm going to test this workflow. I'm going to go back over to bubble and hopefully we should get a nice response. It's going to take a couple of seconds because, again, it's quite a lot of HTML that we're passing through to OpenAI. There we go, not too long. And we do have our text back. Great. So now we can go back over to Bubble and we can get our button. We can click Add Workflow. And then we are going to add in N8N and summarize article. And the only thing we need to pass in is our, what do we call it? URL. Oops. URL. Uh, input input URL as a value. Okay, so we're going to go and get the uh, summary. Then we need to display that summary in a group. So we're going to go to output group and we're going to display step one. And step one, uh, this API call or this webhook 
is coming back as text anyway, so we don't need to uh, get the text from the JSON because it's just text that's going to come back with. So um, let me copy this URL and we are going to come over to the bubble editor. We are going to preview and I'm going to test workflow. And if I put in now the URL and click get summary. Now, if I was doing this for real, I would definitely add in like a group that says generating or we're currently summarizing, but there we go. We can see that we get um, a response, a good summary of that article. Now we could go in and change the prompt here to uh, say, make it long, make it short, focus on this, focus on that. But actually we can see that we are getting a response. Now, if you wanted to publish this, you only need to make one change. And that change is you need to come to webhook. You need to click on production URL and you need to copy this URL. We're going to come back to plugins. I'm going to change it in there. Then if we come back over here, click active, got it. Okay. Then if we run this again, we're going to, have to reload the page and we're going to have to copy the URL again and click get summary. It's loading. It's going to take a second or two to get that. But now we should see that instead of just running on test, it's actually running on the production side of N8N. Okay, and there we go. We have got our response and we can see it's a different response from last time because with AI, it's gonna be different every time. So there we go. Hopefully with this tutorial, you can see how we can set up webhooks between uh, Bubble.io and N8N. So you can run any of your N8N workflows from Bubble and create a really great SaaS app or web application on Bubble, which uses uh, any of your N8N workflows. If you have any questions, please do leave them down below and I'll try and get back to you when I can. If you like this video, then please do give it a like. And if you want to see more, then subscribe and I will see you in another video. Bye bye.